Hi guys, today I'm gonna be filming another Today I'm going to be filming tips and tricks for intonation because a lot of people struggle with that including me and I compiled like a little list of things that will help with intonation Yeah Okay, so I have four things that I want to touch on today. The first two is not going to require my instrument, so I'm just going to say it right up. Okay, the first thing that I want to say is to know your half steps and your whole steps, you know? So whole steps require you to separate your fingers, while half steps require you to have your fingers as close as possible. And these distances vary like throughout the whole fingerboard and depending on which position you are. When you get to know these whole steps and half steps in your repertoire, then it makes it a lot easier to adjust to the intonation on based on what you're hearing. First of all, knowing which the relationships between the notes in your pieces are really important in keeping in tune. Okay, so the second thing I want to touch on is slow practice. I think this is a lifesaver when it comes to intonation. When you do slow practice, it's inevitable that you will get to learn a piece better, especially when you like split the piece up into sections, into little sections, so it's more digestible, I don't know. But um, it's easier to improve on just one section at a time. And when you do this, you can really tune in to how you're sounding and you can fix, like fine tune little things that you were not happy about in terms of intonation and a lot of other things. So I would definitely, definitely 300% recommend slow practice to you. It's a must if you are struggling with intonation. The third tip is also like a really well-known, like widely used thing, but it's to use a drone. So I don't really do drone practice too much, but I do find that it really does help in fine-tuning intonation on pieces. So what you want to do is set your drone to the tonic note of your piece so for example if I was playing Beethoven which is in D major then I would set the drone to a low D I will slowly practice through all the notes in the Beethoven violin concerto to see if everything is in tune and this is really good because when you set the drone to the tonic note you can kind of relate all the other notes to the tonic note. It makes a harmony which like reverberates within you so you can kind of tell if you are slightly off or really off or in tune. I'll just play a D major scale and see how it sounds with the D drone. you guys that it's really important to not have your sound overpower the sound of the drone or else it just makes the whole meaning and significance of drone practice disappear because it makes it really hard for you to relate your intonation to the drone because you really want to be able to hear that balanced harmony. I know a lot of the time I promote like never practicing without vibrato. When you're playing with the drone, you really don't want to use vibrato, especially if intonation is what you're, you know, aiming for, fixing your intonation, because the little vibrations with your vibrato will really distract you from listening to what your original intonation was. So it kind of prevents you from fixing your original tune. And the last thing I want to touch up on is something that I don't really hear a lot of people talk about. Like when I study with my last teacher, I did not even know like practicing shifts was a thing. But yeah, I think practicing shifts is one of the most important parts when it comes to intonation, especially because um, a lot of our intonation problems stem from when we're shifting up or when we're shifting down, if we're extending, all these different kinds of things. And to prevent this as much as possible, 
there's a really systematic way to really practice your shifts and that's the way I've been taught how to do it and I think that has improved my intonation so much even though I do have trouble with it now I would say that practicing your shifts makes your intonation so much more consistent let's use the D major scale as an example again if I were going up the D major scale I reach the F sharp with third finger and then I want to shift to the G on the A string with my first finger the correct way to shift and practice your shifting is play your last note which is my F sharp you want to be shifting with your first finger because you want to arrive on the G with your first finger. So I play the D because I'm in third position. And then I slide up and shoot for the G. Eventually you want to close that gap and create more speed with your shift and also something that really helps is to coordinate your bow change with that shift so it'll be more hidden so eventually it'll sound something like and then it's really similar for when you want to come down the scale and shift down I landed with G first finger and now I want to shift down to F sharp so what you want to do here is you ended with your first finger now you have to go back to third position D with your first finger and then set up your three fingers after that to get to your F sharp it will look something like when you practice your shift accordingly and never jump or skip any shift then you, you will see that your intonation improves significantly I hope my tips kind of helped you guys in some way and that it'll help with your intonation progress let me know how it works and if you guys need help with any other techniques I'll try my best and get it up if I can help and yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for tuning in. Bye.